right, guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. And thank you again for your company. Triple one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. Time now for our next segment. And uh, my guest in studio is Professor Madara Ogot. He's the Vice Chancellor at the University of Nairobi for Research, Innovation and Enterprise. Karibu sana to the show. Thank you very much. Great. Now, uh, today we're here to talk about universities and research. Um, and uh, in fact, this week you are actually having, is it this week? Research week. Maybe you can tell us a bit about what research week is. Okay, thanks. I'll just make a quick correction. I'm the Deputy Vice Chancellor. Deputy so Vice Chancellor. Make sure I don't get fired for, <laughs> <laughs> for usurping <laughs> someone. My bad. Maybe yeah, I've so seen I'm the far Deputy for Vice you. Chancellor for Research, Innovation and Enterprise <laughs> sure. uh, at the University of Nairobi. And okay. actually, our, our research week is in October. Okay. It's October the 12th uh -huh. to the 14th uh, this year. And, and what it does is it has about uh, 12 conferences covering a broad range of subjects across the university. Mm. And the idea is to get students, staff, industry, and the general public uh, discussing research matters uh, that are relevant to our national our national development. Okay. Um, this year's a bit of a challenge, of course, because of the COVID pandemic. Uh, we can't have a face-to-face. -face. So we were thinking, should we cancel? Should we go online? And after discussion with the participants, everybody said, let's go online. Okay. Um, I seem to have a feeling people are tired of being in their houses because our participation in terms of papers being presented is actually higher than last year when we were face to face. <laughs> Interesting. So, so we're getting much wider uh, participation and it's global. I think also because okay. of being virtual, um, foreign participants don't have to travel. Okay. Uh, and so we are seeing a lot more people from foreign universities right. uh, also participating. So typically those conferences, though, would be held here in, in Kenya. This yeah, is a typically UON, we hold them at the university. Right. Yes. This is a UON week, research week. Correct. Um, and you've, you've, you've talked about there being it's at least 12 conferences, a broad range of subjects. Maybe you can just list a few of what those subjects are or what the focus areas are. Yeah. And, and when, when I say it's broad, let, let's start off with one end of the spectrum. Uh, in the humanities, where we have some conferences of, of literature in the global world. Okay. Um, we typically forget a lot about our literature. Yeah. Uh, for example, if you go to the bookstores now, the bookshops, and you're looking for good Kenyan literature, you'll find it's the authors you grew up with mm -hmm. are the same books that are still there. Mm -hmm. um, and so part of the discussion is why are we not generating a new generation of authors uh, the same ones that we had as our set books. Why are we still reading the same old set books? What stories do they have to tell? Yeah. Uh, in as much as we talk about the stories of the past, what modern day stories are there to tell that you can capture mm -hmm. uh, in, in literature? Um, and we go all the way to the side of the spectrum, which is the sciences. Uh, we have a conference on science for development. Uh, and the key thing here is that universities are often accused of being in ivory towers. We do research for the sake of research. Mm. Um, and, and the key driver here in this particular conference is what sort of science research can we do targeting some of the specific problems, not just only in Kenya, uh, but in the region right. uh, as a whole. And I think it's important for us to talk about that because clearly one of the sort of challenges we find with development in Africa, let me call it, and in Kenya, is we, we keep hearing that we want local solutions to local problems. What point does what role really does research you know play in that and how much has it contributed how much has you know research here in kenya contributed to those solutions so far okay um without your own local research uh you no country has any chance and i repeat any chance of development hmm. without your own local research and, and i say that for the simple reason that if you're depending on research from other countries other regions Remember, those researchers were primarily focused on their, on their needs. Countries, yeah. So you're simply taking what they did for their needs and trying to adapt it to your needs. And typically that does not work uh, very well. Okay. I think one of the areas which uh, research has been exceedingly strong in this country is in the area of agriculture. Mm. And most people don't realize that. Yeah. Uh, you, you, hear, you hear about um, uh, crops that are resistant to disease. You hear about seeds that are resistant to pests. Uh, and so on. Right now, what is, is quite big is post-harvest losses. Uh, we lose a very large percentage of everything we grow, never actually reaches the table. It mm -hmm. gets destroyed along the way. Mm -hmm. um, most of that research is actually done locally. 
And, and the reason for that is in the Western countries, if I can say that, they solved those problems a long time ago. Yeah. On the other hand, the pests they have, we don't have. And mm -hmm. vice versa, the pests we have, they don't have. So unless we address our own issues, nobody else will address them for us. And that's why research is, is absolutely important. Right. So there's clearly a gap, though, because if you're saying that, I mean, I would never have imagined agriculture was, you know, the biggest sort of area of, of, of contributing so much research, let's say, uh, or that there's a lot of agricultural research here in Kenya, just because, you know, I feel like every other year we're hearing about drought in this place or, as you've mentioned, harvest losses. So is there a disconnect as far as turning research into policy and action? There's a very big disconnect. Uh, I'll be the first to admit that. And, and part of Research Week and why we, one of the key people we invite actually are policymakers, people in government, people in ministries. Uh, we invite them not just to participate uh, and listen, but to also give talks, keynotes. There's a lot of government people so that we can also hear from them. Uh, here we are doing research on one side. Uh, the policymakers have a problem on the other side. And unless we talk to each other, then we'll not be able to be solving the problems that they see. The second issue is funding. And not everything revolves about money, but research costs money. Mm -hmm. uh, the government has indicated uh, in, in Vision 2030, especially in the current medium term plan, that research and development, broadly speaking, is targeting to reach about 2% of G GDP. And that's not just money from government. That's yeah. just from government, from the private sector. How does that ratio compare to other countries? Uh, on the, well, 2% is actually a very good number in Africa. Okay. In right? Africa. In Africa. Africa is very low. Uh, in the rest of the world, it's, it's very low. It's in, it, you know, it, uh, How low? most developed countries is 5 6% of okay. GDP spent on research. Okay. Uh, and you actually do see the, the dividends from it. We are currently at about 0.8%. Mm. Uh, so even from that low number, we're still very low. Uh, the second challenge we have, and why bringing us together to talk, to, to discuss issues, issues is important, is most of our research funding comes from abroad, right? And mm -hmm. so because it's from abroad, then you can, this, <laughs> you can see yeah. who is dictating yeah. what our research is on. Right. So we're also trying to change that narrative uh, by saying that if you want us to do research in a particular area, the funding has to come from, from within. And, and we're doing that not by complaining and whining and mourning, but by saying, even with the little funding we have, this is what is going on. Mm. So now imagine if more funding was available. Mm -hmm. um, and the other disconnect is we don't do a very good job as universities telling the public what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk to ourselves yes. in the academic community. Yeah. Uh, we talk to our colleagues abroad, but not to the general public. Right. So again, having these conferences is trying to attempt to do that so that the public can also say, wait, okay, I've seen what you're doing, but have you considered this? Yeah. It may be from a layman's point of view, but they're telling you what the actual problem is, yeah. not what you perceive it to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting point there, because I, I actually worked in strategic communications for NGOs and things, doing exa com uh, addressing this exact problem. Because yeah. I think a lot of the times we forget that the stakeholders, the public, you know, might have suggestions. They're actually interested in uh, seeing how things would be implemented. And I think also when we create demand, then it also helps to push for policy as yeah. well. So yeah. it's very interesting that you raise that. But um, so, you know, the other, I, I also want to ask you this, um, just as a general sort of viewpoint um, or per your perspective of just education here in Kenya and linking it to then research, because um, I think there's been various reports, you know, I think there was one maybe several months ago, just kind of even talking about how our educational system, students were actually losing some years as far as study just maybe because of the quality of education so even by the time we're getting to university do you think we've actually created the appetite the sort of environment for students to want to do research how does that connect with sort of and of course the system has changed but i think we're still paying the consequences of an educational system that kind of just encourage people to memorize and pass your exam and so by the time you're getting to university and it's like, this is, it's now open, research, find, understand. How much of that are we actually seeing? Is there an appetite even for more researchers in this country? 
Yeah. Is there demand? Yeah, we have two big problems. But first of all, I want to dispel a myth. Our education system is not broken. Mm -hmm. um, the competency-based curriculum is a huge improvement on it. Yeah. Um, but, and I always ask this question, if our education system is so bad, uh, as people say it is, why are there so many Kenyans in foreign universities who have very strict entry requirements, mm -hmm. but they enter and they excel? Mm -hmm. Why are there so many Kenyans abroad who are professionals, but they went to school in Kenya? Mm -hmm. All their learning was in Kenya, mm -hmm. including university, mm -hmm. but they're excelling abroad. Mm. So I don't believe our education system is broken. Okay. What I believe it is, is that it is not implemented well. Okay. Um, in a typical Nairobi school, I will do well. Uh, even in the poor schools. Mm. I mean, most rural schools, um, it's a struggle. Yeah. Simply because I'm not given what basic education requirements are needed mm -hmm. to do well. I'm not given it as a student, the teacher's not given it, even talk about basic classroom, basic toilet facilities in schools, et cetera, et cetera. I think you know all this. Mm -hmm. So that you have this big dis discrepancy between the haves and the have-nots in the education yeah. system. Yeah. Uh, I think that's where the big challenge is. But okay. then when I come to your specific question on the issue of, of is there demand for research? Again, we don't communicate enough to the Kenyan public the importance of research. Mm. And therefore, if I'm, if I'm going through a primary school system uh, and I'm thinking about careers, the, the idea of doing research in the university is not one of the careers. Yeah, it just doesn't sound right? fun or glamorous. Or, yes. and, and I think people don't even know what they do with it thereafter. Absolutely. Like, are there jobs for it? Again, yeah. very poor uh, way that we communicate. Mm. The second is we don't value, in my view, researchers. Yeah. Um, not everything is monetary, but uh, to some extent it is. Uh, I'm an engineer by training. Mm -hmm. uh, and Typically, I ask my fifth year students, uh, I've stopped asking now because two years ago, I keep telling them, why do none of you want to come back and do a master's degree and do a PhD? Because we are hiring. Mm. We've been hiring for years. We just cannot get anyone to hire. Mm. And a couple of years ago, one lady stood up and said, well, my colleagues are not telling you. We just don't want to be as poor as you are. <laughs> and the argument was that with an undergraduate engineering degree, if you remain in engineering, your starting salary is higher than a professor's degree. Wow. So the argument in engineering, I'm being, I'm being very specific, why would I want to be a faculty member in engineering? Wow. Right? And again, we have not sold ourselves enough. There are benefits, and it's not all monetary. That's why we are in it. Yeah. But it's that selling. Wow. And again, I want to go back to the point that a country without research just cannot develop. Okay. Yeah. So, um, this I'm really enjoying our conversation, but again, I have to be mindful of time, and that's yeah. fleeting quite quickly. But um, it's, then it's evident to me that, number one, we've not taken research as seriously as it should. The researchers themselves need to do a better job of communicating Absolutely. the research. Yeah. But also, I also you know, think our government has not prioritized this as much as it should have. And especially when we're saying, you know, we need to kind of develop our own solutions to things. Because the truth is, everybody in the world is dealing with their own problems. No one is going to come out and, you know, specifically decide that they're going to help Kenya. And even when they do, it is restricted funding and they have their own terms with it. So clearly, um, there's... there's at least I think we can see the way forward. Now it is about actually acting upon it and, and setting on that course. So as far as Research Week is, is, is concerned, for anyone who would be interested in taking part, do they need to register? Do they need to be a student at University of Nairobi? Do they need to be you know, a, a researcher already in the field? How can the public engage? Okay, um, anyone can register and participate in, in Research Week. Um, the, the, the call for people to present has closed, but now we are, we're really looking for people to participate and have the conversation. Uh, it's simply going on the university website. Uh, just Google University of Nairobi. Uh, there'll be a big banner right on it for Research Week, and the instructions are given. Okay. Um, and we're registering people all the way until the 
end of this month mm -hmm. uh, because it is virtual and everybody gets a personalized link to join in. That gives about a week or so okay. to be able to set that up. So we are, we are encouraging and looking forward to people to come in, but as we have discussed earlier, to, to listen yeah. but to participate, not just to be passive listeners, yeah. uh, to comment, uh, to critique, uh, so that we really and truly get the conversation going. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the show. I think this has been a great discussion. Um, and also just important to remind our young audience here, too, that, you know, research is needed. That's right. And uh, hopefully this is a career choice that some of you could pursue as well. So, Asante Sana for coming on thank to the so show. Thank you so much for having me. You're most welcome. With that said, guys, we're going to take a break now as we get ready for the second hour of the show. Still coming up, uh, we're going to be talking about the secrets of winners. What distinguishes one from another? What makes one actually win in life? And later on, we'll be talking about tips to consider before spending as we talk about value for money. Triple one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. And I'll be back after this.